Hello there, friends and lovers. Um, yeah, welcome to the live broadcast here on the interwebs, worldwide, maybe even interplanetary. Uh, I'm, I guess, some kind of host. Uh, yeah, I'm Steve, and this is the Mystery Show. Yeah, why, why the Mystery Show? Because personally, I never really have a, a great plan for what to talk about. There's so many things going on in the world. And those things have a massive effect on us all. We can talk about the things that are going on in the world, or we can talk about what it does to us, and what it does to us personally. Because we're seeing, like, wars going on, or we're seeing political uh, political agendas being rolled out, and um, m m m m worldwide media taking a particular biased opinion on things, you know, so this all has an effect with you, with me, with each of us on the inside, a psychological effect, maybe to begin with. Um, and that maybe will, will lead to a physical um, side effect just from the psychological but also I mean we're, every single day we're, we're almost like under attack by millions of different toxins um, chemicals and toxins in the air and things like that and not to, to get really freaked out I think in a way it's amazing that the human body can can manage to, to to make the best of life even then you know I, I think to myself wow how many times have I have I consciously consumed toxins in order to make me feel better? <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's a very messed up world, isn't it? It's a very crazy experience being a human being. And sometimes it's very... It, when we look at politics, when we look at suits and ties, like, OK, let's get serious about life, <laughs> you know. Let's... let's I don't know, put on a tie and, and a suit and let's get serious and let's have a, a, a briefcase with all our seriousness inside of it. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, the, the, everything is important, isn't it? You know, like um, a, a baby crying it may need something, you know, just the same as a businessman who's like lost, lost his documents or something, or a businesswoman, you know. So importance, what's important to anybody, and oft, often in life, when we talk about, right, let, let's get serious about life, right, okay, everybody get your suit and tie on, <laughs> you know, everybody dress up as a banker, <laughs> you know, we're going to get serious now, let's talk eloquently in one language, you know, it's, it, it's crazy really. Funny thing is, is you get these people out into, in, you know, these eloquent, smart people out into a social environment, and they're generally fall to pieces you know you get around a, a, a table of people this has been my experience really um, being in a rock band as a guitar player and and then later on as a singer but going around with our band and like, watching watching the, the, the situations because you'd have like 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 um, you'd have like businessmen having a, 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 a meeting, a bit like a, um, like a celebration, you know what I mean, like a dinner, and a business meeting dinner, that's it, and they all get together and they meet, and they've hired a rock band, because they love the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and whatever, and we've heard this band does, does a couple of cover songs of the Rolling Stones, and they like the Rolling Stones, they're a rock band, yeah, we want a rock band, we want to, you know, in our suit, like, to take our ties off and tie our tie around our forehead, and we want to like, unbutton the top of our shirt and, and play air guitar in the office on the table, you know. And, and the secretary can pretend to play the drums. You know, this is like human experience. I'm not mocking anything. This is like when we're talking about seriousness of life. You're like, really, like, serious. Let's get serious about life. It's like, what about, like, you know, what about the things that, like, we need to take seriously as a human, like getting on the desk and tying your tie around your head and playing an air guitar, you know, so that's what we're going to do in a minute, is like have a, have a little bit of a strum, at least at least me, this is like a little meet round the campfire, isn't it, you know, so, and while we're, 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 we're it's a process, isn't it, life, it's not a thing, it's like not, life isn't, like is, 
like you say, the, the river is flowing. But I, I don't think that's true because the, ri the river just is. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like you, you wouldn't ask a river, and what are you doing, river? Oh, I'm flowing. <laughs> you know, look at me, I'm flowing. I'm a river, I'm flowing. That's what I do. No, the, the, the river doesn't do anything, does it? This, it's all a cause and effect that we, that we label and say the river is flowing. The plants are growing. Look at me, I'm growing. <laughs> I'm getting a deeper voice. Yeah, I don't know. I'm maybe off my head. That's the way the world makes us go. And I think that's the thing. It's like if you, if you can have a sense of humour, you can you hide a certain level of insanity. Because the insanity... Insanitary... <laughs> the insanity is a part of the process, I think. It's about, about like being able to qu put the mind in real question. I think that's why a lot of people like do, do you know, do certain, uh, would, like, how can we say it, substance initiated ceremonies like ayahuasca or magic mushrooms or licking some, some, some Arizonan frog, you know, and going into, into like a, a state of mind. And I often wondered why people would make themselves ill in order to, to find something, if you know what I mean. And it sounds cynical when I say that, um, but in a way often, in times when I felt ill, my mind's wandered off into the most amazing places. A river being. Hello there, everyone in the chat room. It's lovely to have this, this, uh, this bit of company. Uh, you know me, I'm sat around the burning barrel of apocalyptic doom but making the best of, of, of a situation. To be honest, I, I think most of us are just able to stand on the periphery of life, of existence, or like, you know, normal life, domestic existence. We're able to sort of stand to the back of that. You know, we're all pulled into it on a daily, but we can sort of stand back and we can observe it, can't we? And I think we're interested, you know, I'm interested in I'm I've always been interested in psychology, you know, and, and uh, uh, philosophy and things like that. We've, uh, probably a lot of us, you know, we're like, got like these ethereal PhDs in all sorts of complicated things. Let me just, what's going to happen if I press this? Nothing. Everything's gone off. I mean, just, <laughs> just trying to find a camera, front camera. Okay, that one will do. So, hello there, Robert, uh, not a doctor, Robert, from Health Freedom UK. Hello there, mate, in the chat room. Also on a Tuesday night on YouTube and Rumble and Odyssey, more and more on Odyssey and Rumble. I'm also broadcasting here on, on Odyssey and Rumble. Hello there, Starfish Troopers podcast. Hi there, Pete. It was a, a good laugh last night. Was it last night? I'm losing track of time a little bit. It's not madness. You know how it is when, you, when you're when really busy. But it was good to jump in and have so many, so many people. It's like a collage of people around the, the burning barrel. Hello there, Days. Hello there, mascara snake. Hello there, Spanish chicken. And I could do with some background music for this bit. Hello there, cookie. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> man. Uh, so, yeah, Solid Excaliburs and Monday evenings. Hello there, Rick Haywood. Rick Haywood. Rick Haywood. scrolling up yeah you know this is a merry a merry meeting always torn between this, this the, the decision to to entertain or to just to chill out and I think it's um, you know it's a night to chill out I don't really want to get into any like serious subjects and things you know sometimes I think I want to I want to give some meat and potatoes or whatever what is it called meat and bones 
uh, you know, to, to, to people who give the time to, to listen to, to, to me or whatever. But I think we're kind of, sometimes at least, you know, it shouldn't, you know, things should never be forgotten. But, um, and I always, I always think, you know, my broadcast is a short time, so I'll use it all just to shout my head off, you know, and get, get, get stuff off my chest. But at the same time, you know, like, and, and, you know, when other people do that, I think, oh, thanks for getting that off my chest for me. You know, if somebody else says something, whether it's online or in real life, it's good to hear somebody else say something that, you know, you, you wanted to get off your chest. It's like, oh, okay, okay, I've heard it said now. That's good. That's twice as good. But the whole anger and the whole stress of the whole thing, it, it doesn't make sense after a while, does it? It sort of leads to, you know, it, but it... I, I guess I get that from anything, even watching an exciting film. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you kind of, um, you know, it's a film, but you're getting excited, and then you're like getting all, or like a video game. You know, sometimes I don't, I don't know. Put a, like a one in the chat if, if like, I love this one in the chat crap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Put a one in the chat if, like, actually, like, playing video games or watching films or whatever. Um, well, put, put a zero if, it's, if, you, if you don't, but put a one if, like, say, films make you, like, if you can give you nausea and make you, you, you know, have a physical effect on you. And two, video games. And three, all of them. <laughs> something like that. You know, I don't know. I like when I watch a film, I get a physical effect. You know, I get excited, and it goes often into my stomach. I think that which is connected through the eyes is is very much connected to the stomach. It would make sense, wouldn't it, for a hunter? You know, you see the prey, and it goes to your stomach because that's the centre of why you choose that prey. You know, like. It'd be almost the stomach, the mind of the stomach, probably, that's, like, connected with the eyes. So we've got some, um... Oh, right, yeah, a bit of both. I forgot what that was about. <laughs> yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, so one... Like, fil films... Uh, can have that effect, yeah. Cookie says one. Mascara snake, one. Uh, and two, yeah, video games. Um, three, all three, yeah, Spanish chicken, three. I, I, I was doing, I was doing this one called Alien Arena, it's an open source game, I thought, oh yeah, it'll be safe because it's open source, <laughs> you know, it, but, um, and you've got these little aliens and you have to capture a flag and run back to your own base with it and, and, and the flag appears above your head and, you know, like, uh, that night, one night I was like asleep dreaming. I started dreaming that I was running around with this big flag on me head running around. And at that point, you start to know that it's having a, a deeper effect on you. Not that it matters, you know. It's not like, oh yeah, you know, be be aware. Uh, but I think it, it, it like, because obviously we sometimes take mind bending drugs in order to perceive the world from different perspectives, you know, states of mind and stuff. Um, so we obviously we do it to ourselves. I mean, we watch it. We would watch a scary movie maybe to get that effect, to get that fear. Um, I guess a film would be boring if it didn't scare the shit out of you. But it does. It does indicate how much the, the, the effect the media has on on the physical. You know, we often think that we're, we're safeguarded. Yeah. 42. Hello oh, there, Mr. Smith. Screw films and video games. The whole thing makes me want to puke. <laughs> yeah. Re really, yeah. I, 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 I'd say that uh, over time, now, especially these days, I find it very, very difficult to watch um, a movie, a modern movie. And if I go back to an old movie like With Nail and I, Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Maybe it's time for a little tune. Maybe you don't mind. Uh, chat amongst yourselves. I'm just going to jam here in the corner. And what am I going to play? Got a few little tunes open on the screen. On, on the screen? <clears throat> One of the main reasons I like to, to, to play a tune on the mystery show is, is because it, it, it puts me in a different space, really. Um, and I also think it's, it's good when others like, you know, play. I, I like to see people play real live music live, really. Like live. <laughs> so, yeah. In which case. Mr. Smith does live streams, I'm imagining also this evening after the mystery show at 11. There we go, a new, a new angle. <clears throat> I was always a big fan of the singer uh, Ian Gillen. Um, yeah, like as a kid, there was just something about voices. There were several voices, like Ronnie James Dio and um, Joe Lynn Turner, um, John Bonham, Robert Plant, and Ian Gillan. You know, he had for me like an amazing, an amazing, um, yeah, amazing range, amazing voice, amazing smoothness to the voice. It was, to me, very silky. You know, all the voices were like steel or chrome, you know. And yeah, no stream from Mr. Smith this evening. Uh, so this is an Ian Gillan song, and it's like a, from an album, Mr. Universe, which is kind of like a secret, unknown album, really. And... I've listened to, like, uh, you, you get these, like, solo albums, and there's a lot of good songs on there, and, uh, but sometimes you just find a, a gem that's, like, seems to be, you know, it should have been a really popular album. There's a few tracks on there that, that are just so amazing. But G Ian Gillan was mostly known for, uh, what was it, what was it called? Deep Purple. Yeah, Deep Purple. I'm not sure if Gillan sang for... Black Sabbath, did he? I'm, I'm sure Cookie will know this, or Mascara Snake, or Days. Did Ian Gillan f sing for Rainbow? Okay, this one's called She Tears Me Down.
me I've got a problem Cause I'm telling you It just ain't true Why don't you understand Tell me you understand Cause she tells me damn Good one. Just gotta clear my throat again. Gotta clear my throat again. Yeah, so it does uh, bring a little bit of uh, yeah, Ian Gillen. Amazing how many good bands come out of England, really. I tell you what I, I noticed. One of the reasons, well, the main reason why I spent a lot of time in Germany is because of the music. Because the German people really love British music and American music, but they love like you know the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, um, all, all of you know loads, all the British stuff. And what, uh, often I find it almost harder to make music in Britain. Like from a German perspective, you you know it's like oh all the British people are playing music on the street and every like life's a musical in Britain. You know the English, the language of music. You know everyone must be singing all the time, singing in the rain. <laughs> you know and. Yeah, because it's like always raining in England, but we're all singing. That's the sort of the foreign perspective. You know, like every every seventh house has got a garage band in it. And, you know, like in Germany, uh, there's like people playing like co cover songs. You know, loads loads of people play guitar and they can play a few English songs and they'll sit there and you know. <clears throat> Just thinking of an example of a British song. Since you've been gone, <laughs> since you've been gone, out of my head can't take it. But, you know, it's like quite funny and, but like massive respect, singing a foreign language and getting that close. And, and you know, like just having a great laugh with it and stuff. Love is a burning flame, <laughs> a ring of fire. <laughs> Thinking, like, we're just having a fucking brilliant laugh, man. It, it's like, <clears throat> yeah, nice one, Mr. Smith. Have a good one. <coughs> Got a bit of a frog in my throat. That's a good thing about singing a bit. Um, yeah, you know, like the appreciation for music, but I do find it more difficult in Britain. Maybe it was just me, but I found it more Britain, in, uh, more difficult in the home uh, and the land of music to actually play music. You know, it's like the, I, I feel like there's less less appreciation. But I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm completely wrong. Because like amongst the circle of friends I know, people do appreciate, you know, you, a good song. You start playing a song and people are instantly singing it. Yeah, TFHG. TFHG. <laughs> I'm going to play this little song from um, Paul Weller. I've all, I always knew about Paul Weller. What was he from? That, what was the band he was from? Was it the Jam? And um, Paul Weller, yeah, and uh, like a, a German friend of mine, he's a massive Paul Weller fan. You know, or like fanatical, like like the best, like the best songwriter ever, Paul Weller. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's it, like he's like German. You no, know, Paul Weller obviously is. Is he British or Scottish or whatever? Is Britain Scotland? No, it isn't. Is it? 
No, there's England, Scotland, and Wales, Britain, and the UK. Uh, jurisdictions within jurisdictions and boroughs within counties. This one's English Rose. It's a, it's a nice, really nice tune, I think. From Woking, Style Council, Paul Weller. Let's put it on a different camera there. It's one of those well-written songs, isn't it? It's a lovely, uh, lovely song. <laughs> nice one, Spanish, but 
a, a, a negative spin on things. <laughs> Uh, it's a look, yeah. I look, it's a, it's a lovely tune, isn't it? <clears throat> Here's one from the doors, the doors. I remember when I was young and I didn't know that I knew the Doors and I, I remember seeing Doors posters like on TV you'd see a poster with the Doors I was thinking, what are the Doors? I think, uh, yeah, with me it was like ACDC and Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath The Doors kind of came later I don't even know if it really fell into the category of like the, the same rock music, you know, like rock music picked me up as a, as a, as a, as a young, as a young man. So it gave me power, whereas The Doors was more sort of like, at a certain age, having, having to deal with certain life's experiences was where this came in. Faces look ugly when you're alone Women seem wicked when you're unwanted Streets are uneven when you're down, when you're strained Faces come out in the rain When, when you're strange No one remembers your name When you're strange When you're a stranger, faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. Streets are uneven when you're down, when you're strange. Faces come out in the rain when you're strange. No one remembers your name when you're strange. Ellie, Ellie, Elio, Elio, here we go again, Elio, hello to anyone who's uh, joined in, and hello to anyone who's watching, um, you know, silently observing, lurking, um, watching, time travelling, hello there, made in the UK, PLC, another stranger... Strange and it's strange, isn't it? Like you know, it's 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 funny, really. We we live a life where we think people know us, or the people close to us know us, or you even know yourself, and then you don't. You, you, like, like actually, that's the crux of the biscuit, isn't it? That's the that's the the point of the matter. Is like, you, 
you know that you don't know yourself, so nobody else could possibly know you. But maybe others know you better than you in certain ways, and maybe you know yourself in others more than in certain ways. It's just crazy, isn't it? You can actually the whole you can really go crazy on um, like self identification, self definition, self observation, self modification. And we live in a, in, in a, a society where we make profiles and accounts, you know, we have these social networks and put our details on there. You know, we make profile, isn't it? Like, with a name and an identity, and you start identifying with this other identity. And for every persona or person you create, you've got a yet another, another um, parallel dimension to, to to nurture. You know, it's like if you live in a lie, or you live in two worlds, and trying to keep them separate. You know, you have to kind of keep them mentally separate and it causes then like a mental separation in your own head it's amazing how much time we spend like in in our heads worrying or whatever and, and thinking that that will actually change the world outside at all or that even by worrying we, we're somehow fulfilling our duty i suppose that's we've learned that from somewhere maybe it's like you should be worrying you, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I'll sit and worry, 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 worry. You know, sitting there going, problem, problem, what is the problem, what is the solution, what is the problem, what is the solution, going round and round, fucking round and round, fucking round and round, fucking round and round, like a scratch record. And it's like, it somehow feels like that's what you deserve to do when you've got a problem. It's just fucking worry. And sometimes they're not problems, are they? they're, they're solutions. They're solutions. Nobody really knows anybody. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to debunk that. Like, I, I'm, no, it's not a fact. It, like, let's jump on that immediately. There is no such thing as fact. Well, I think if there is a fact, then that is a fact. Nobody really knows anybody. Okay, I'm gonna play another tune. Is that all right with you? Is that all right with you? Yeah. Chat amongst yourselves while I just, just play a tune. Ah, it's fucking Beatles, isn't it? I don't mean to be vulgar when I say fucking Beatles, isn't it? You know, I think no, it's a secret way of communication. Very respectful, actually. Like well beyond the eloquence of the average uh, legalese speaking citizen. Tune in, but it's all right. That I think, think 
it's not too bad Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry field mm, Nothing is real Nice. I think it's me You know I know it's just a dream I think I know I mean uh, Yes, but it's all wrong That is, I think I disagree Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry fields forever Strawberry fields forever <laughs> Ah, it's alright, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, Beatles, everyone knows that song, don't they? Everyone knows that song Of a certain generation, anyway Yes, we've got a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the chit chat in the uh, chat room. Room, it is funny isn't it, room. We've come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> you know, like a kilo millimetre. We've come a long way. Or have we? I remember back when the internet first started up, you know, modem. You get the telephone out. I mean, back really even earlier then, you'd like have a box with, the, you know, with two bobbles and you'd put the, get the telephone off the telephone hook and put it on, you know, onto these two, like, things that, Listen and send a modem, a modulator, demodulator, and then obviously it became a box that you could plug into your telephone, so you didn't have to actually put the telephone onto the modem, because all it was doing is sent like you know speaking on the phone, sending a signal, listening to a signal back, and so the the the, the computer sends out a, a little signal to say, is anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? And then, like, if the other computer is, like, yeah. listening as well, and if it's if it hears, is there anybody out there, it'll go, yeah, me. <laughs> I'm little, little Johnny from over here. One, two, three. Send that back to the other one. And the one who's saying, is there anybody out there, is also listening. It's like, okay, we've got a connection. What do we do with that? Receive data, you know. And and then there'll be a protocol. That's what why it's called transfer protocol. You know to make sure that no data is lost because you know packets of data get lost. Things are sent in packets. It's like just I mean it's it's just a name, isn't it? You know, but data is sent in packets, and those packets are then glued together at the you know little pieces. Here we go.
afraid to care Leave, but don't leave me Look around, choose your own ground The long you live and how you fly The smiles you give and tears you cry and all you touch and all you see Is all your life will ever be Run, rabbit run Dig the hole, forget the sun When at last the work Don't sit down, it's time to dig another world For long you live and how you fly And only if you ride the tide Balance on the biggest wave Race towards an early grave I like to be here when I can When I come home cold and tired It's good to warm my bones beside the fire Far away across the field the tolling of the iron bell Calls the faithful to their knees To hear the softly spoken magic spells Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, the spoken magic spells you got it. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. No. Messing about. Messing about. Yeah, it's always always nice to have a little bit of a, a bit of bit, a bit of Pink Floyd. I think I sometimes think, yeah, we're just the old hippies, but you know, like show show me a good song like Strawberry Fields or or um, Dark Side of the Moon. You know, like some of the songs off there. You know, they're just really well written songs. Maybe it's it's. it's got there, you know, because they got there first, wrote them songs first, but I think there's like, like generally, it's a sound, isn't it? You know, it's like Hammond, or, you know, organ sounds, guitar, drums, bass, vocals, it's like the classic, um, the classic combination. If you like pina colada <laughs> and getting caught in the rain, dun, dun, dun. Oh, I feel like playing some Rush before I go. I'm going to be playing a very uh, low key version. Rush, one of the best, uh, best musical cult bands of all time. Just amazing. Uh, this one's uh, my attempt at limelight. <laughs>
album and moving pictures. I thought it was like a very, very well thought out album. Phenomenal, like singing and stuff. Brilliant, really. Uh, <laughs> just reading the chat there, giggle, giggle. Here we go, let's have a go at some limelight. Um, if you're happy and you know it, if you know it, if you know Limelight, and it's it's one of my favourite Bush, so Bush songs, really. Uh, if you know it, you can uh, do something in the chat room to indicate that fact. Say, so, whoa! <laughs> applause in my head but not for me for the band you know it's like yeah it's just a fucking brilliant song I went to, I went to see Bush live it's just uh, I mean I love the I love the music but the, the show was amazing and the music was played perfectly it was amazing um, I went to see Ozzy Osbourne as well on a mini mini tour and that was also amazing but in a totally different way you know Ozzy's just sort of like, almost like the priest that can that can just like dominate the, the stage, you know. Come on, everybody! <laughs> you know, just just Ozzy, isn't it? Yeah. I think we're we're, we're coming up to the uh, end of the hour. So yeah, I'm just playing a bit of music till then. I, I wanted to change my shirt because black shirt, black background doesn't kind of, it doesn't make things easy. Uh, but we'll smoke a, a, a pipe with the incest and the in, uh, the ancestors.
a rainbow. <laughs> since thank fuck you gone, <laughs> since you've been gone, out of my head can't take it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, a mate of mine, an older friend, when I was in the band time, he was like saying, I tell you what is a success makes a successful song. Do 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 and he's like, What do you mean? Do 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 and he explained, like, since you've been gone, out of my head can't take it. Do, 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 do. Like a song that makes you wanna sing that like fill in bit. You know, do 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 <laughs> And it is true, I mean, I'm laughing because it's great. It's just great, you know, there's something about rock music, like, especially ACDC and that, that's just so... Uh, I mean, what we what we got, let's like, just, like, wake up our senses quick. Fundamentally, like almost like like native music, isn't it? Like traditional music. Back in black. <laughs> it's appropriate. But yeah, rainbow. I surrender. I surrender. Since you've been gone. What was the older one that they did? It was um. Oh no, I'm thinking of Deep Purple, man. Dun 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 dun. Hmm. Interesting news there from from in the chat room there. Depressed but physically healthy Dutch woman, 28, with a borderline personality disorder says she will end her life by euthanasia next month because doctors say she will never get better. Fucking hell, we can't just make a, a place where people can go and have a laugh. You know, I mean, free meals and a laugh. You know, the burning barrel of, of, of doom, you know, that we create. People must have it really different. Some people in society that are in, like, really um, domesticated, rigid, kind of competitive social situations. They, 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 they're really going to have troubles with, um, say, mental, a mental problem. You know, and everybody has a mental problem. Everybody has a mental problem. It's just that, that like, sometimes, you know, you, you can manage to get out of it because you, every day is routine. You know, people have like everyday routines. There's something I wanted to talk about as well is like m you know mental health. Thanks a lot, Kitty. Lovely, and it was lovely to have a, a chat the other night. Yeah, mental health is a funny one, isn't it? You know, like we we often look at mental health as being like the de deterioration of a human being, almost. Like you could you could lose an arm, it's like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> don't have to carry, um, don't have to carry shit <laughs> anymore. You know, you, you you could lose your leg and say, oh well, you know, I didn't need it anyway. You obviously it's making sort of light of a, of a difficult situation, but you'd never look at someone and say, oh, yeah, yeah, he's only a Three quarters of a of a man, you know, he's only got like one like leg or whatever. You you never really think that or say that, not even out of like politeness, but just simply the fact you know it's not true, is it? You know, like the like the size or shape of, of something doesn't make a, a human being what a human being is. I don't really know what it is, but I'd say it's an essence to me because. It's not someone's intellect, intelli intelligence or intellect, uh, you know, it's not what people know and, and stuff. Although that can be a reflection of the character, you know, the essence or whatever. Like, like owl, you know, an owl, the bird, the night bird, owl. It's sort of, 
indicated as being wise and stuff like that. And I don't know if it, I, I would imagine there's some sense in that, you know, the the wisdom of the owl or seeing in the dark or. Um, but then you've got like sly snakes, like foxes and cunning snakes, and you know, different animals have different uh, different attributes, different essence to them. You know, their hunger, what they eat, is like connected to their perception. You know, it's like kind of obvious, and if you if you if you've got a particular diet, then every time you see that, you're gonna you're gonna like consider whether it's food or not, and that, so that'll obviously question the stomach that's why some th some ideas make us feel sick you know like physically sick ideas but we can control all of that really I believe to a degree we can you know re reinterpret the images reinterpret the information we get you know often we, we we see a lot of information and take it at face value or then deny it and say that it's false information but we could say maybe it means something different when interpreted differently you know someone's saying the fish is hanging in the tree you know wink wink nudge nudge the fish is hanging in the tree you know, you'd think, well, hang on, some, some, they're trying to signal something to me. A fish is hanging in the tree? And then you probably go, like, you know, is that an anagram? Tree? Fish? <laughs> the fish is hanging in the tree. But you wouldn't say he's lying. He's lying, you know, because he's, he's, he seems quite important. And he's been taken away by, like, the enemy shouting, the fish is in the tree, <laughs> you know. And you go to the tree and there's, like, a fish... No. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. You know, the system, like, the, the system, the world we live in, is full of regulations, rules, signs, information, media, and everything else. And we take it as face, face value or reject it. We take it as read, you know, or reject it. Rather than saying, well, hang on a sec, maybe everyone else is wrong. Well, how about that then? I guess you would come to the conclusion, well, if everybody's wrong, we don't, else is wrong, we don't stand a chance. But if everybody else is wrong and they're going the wrong direction, we don't stand a chance anyway. You know, the truth remains the truth even in the minority of one. I don't you know. <laughs> I just invented that. <laughs> Actually, it's not really an exact um, Gandhi quote, but never mind. You know, the, the, yeah, the truth, like, it doesn't matter if there's a million people standing there thinking that the wrong thing. If you've got the truth, you've got the truth. You know, I think we forget that, don't we? You know, I'm not really trying to, like, say it, not really actually. When I first started the mystery show, I thought maybe I could change the world. <laughs> you know? Maybe on my own, maybe collectively, whatever, but maybe the mystery show is, like, takes part of, like, changing the world and everybody who, who takes part would change the world. I still believe that, actually. But it's not, like, it's not, not no longer the reason I do it. I read it. The reason I do it is because I enjoy, I enjoy, you know, the interactions. And I think it keeps us sane. And that's one of the main, the main aspects about modern day life with all of this, um, this technology and constant availability. And I think it's with everybody, but I think in, a, in general, um, maybe, maybe uh, like, I, I try not to be sexist or generalisation. So it, it, like, it is a generalisation because all people are not the same and, and, and stuff. But I'm, I'm sort of seeing that the, the addictions are going towards like the, the men or males, young boys, older men, young men, are tending towards video game addictions. If you used to call them addictions, let's just call it spending more time uh, like uh, in, say, a video game, like a multiplayer video game. And the women are spending a lot more time sort of like on social networks. Um, places where you can self, uh, you know, put self is a lot more to do with the self and the hair and cosmetics and like social networking and 
always constantly available night and day you know the, the, the mobile phone goes bing and then like the arm it automatically goes out to get the phone if it's not already like connected that almost automatic response bing bing and your arm goes out and, you know i can't believe how much we've become dependent on these phones like if, every um it seems like every uh, institution, sort of like the, the the governments, the councils, the um, like insurance companies, your bank, every every different thing that you can do on an app on your phone. You know, you've got a map on your phone. You've got everything on your phone. You've got a torch on your phone. You can use it as a magnifying glass. You know, you take your photos, you make videos, your voice recordings, type your, your documents on it, print with it. And, you know, video phone with it. It's like almost like replaced every single thing. A radio on there. I think people forgot that one. But we're, it's like nowhere near as 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 like capable as the human being, and. I think in a way when we start to to only believe in that connection to that mobile, I'm looking there because I've, I've got this mobile phone, you, you can't even hardly see it, can you? You know, it's like, it's insane. I think it's just like, just such a big, a powerful tool and it's the thing that's like replaced community. This freaking black thing, you know. You all got one. Maybe there's a lot of you watching on one of these. I do sometimes, you know. Because if I'm not like sat on my, on my computer here, I'm somewhere else, and I've got this little little, little thing all over the place. Like that's it, isn't it? It's all full of stars. Just phenomenal that our lives are just just. People say, "See, oh, just download the app, log in, press that, swipe that, jump that, put your." You know, another bloody password. Yeah, Black Mirror. You can see my um, my soundproof padding. Look, my Ilbruch mat. You can see the camera there somewhere. Anyway, yeah, messing around with a reflection. Um. I don't know what to make of it all, but I, I know that it has a effect, massive effect on me psychologically and I'm quite uh, able to observe my own psyche. I think a lot, a lot of you know what I mean. You've, you've been through certain situations and you've been able to observe your own psyche and compare it with like, you know, it's like navigating on the ocean, you, you dead, use dead reckoning and you like, use the orientation sort of thing and you can kind of work out uh, is my psyche which direction is it going and you can see how it affects like you can you can see when you start like you, you get an idea like for example what's the word starfish in greek and then instantly you get this impulse to go to to, to translate google or whatever and, and find it out and it's great, isn't it? You can find out what starfish is out, and then you and then you go on there, and you notice there's a few messages, so you get lost in messages, and then you get lost on a video. It's like, what did I go there for? Oh yeah, starfish in Greek. Why did I want to know starfish in Greek? Curiosity, <laughs> you know, because I can. What's starfish in Greek? Hey Google, 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 Alexa, can I have starfish in Greek? You know the idea. I'm going to like connect to the, the cosmos through this pipe that the ancient natives did. The Native American Indians, well, Native Americans, indigenous peoples. And the bowl signi is, is, signifies the feminine and the stem, the masculine, and putting the, them together. Um, is obviously uh, the the unity. Would normally use a match in ceremonial reasons, but you know, there's nothing really wrong about b becoming modern. You know, you could say, well, we should create sparks by rubbing sticks together, but we're going to smoke with the ancestors and not 
get bogged down by ceremonies. And the ceremony is like an entrance to, to respect, I think. But, with, you know, let's have a smoke with Tony and Chris. Excuse me, should have just muted me, me cough there. I've got a button, that's the advantage of modern day life. You can mute, mute things. Like for example, the truth, or you can get censorship. It is a very difficult situation for, for everybody. Especially those who are trying to um, represent an, an alternative view. Even the word alternative is now are pretty much um, labelled as the as the social enemy number one. You know what am I talking about? When you turn on the news, you open a newspaper, and there's a narrative. The narrative says things. It says like you know, oh uh, no, I, no, I'm not going to go into that. It'll just say a one-sided story. I was going to say a one-sided story as an example, but I think the, one, the, the example would trigger people too much to, care, to, to even take it as an example. So like, that's not an example, that's not true. That's not true. If it's not true, you know, it doesn't seem true because... because of the way it's been portrayed all these years. I'll go for it, I'll, I'll fucking go for it, right? How about this one? You know... Of all human beings on the planet, is it man or woman who are the biggest victim of violence? Of, of people. And we're all people, you know, we're all kind of equally human, sentient beings inside, we're born in different bodies, we've established that. But let's establish, you know, what's, what, what's the, who's the biggest victim or, you know, what gender is the biggest victim of violence? Because oft, often we imagine that, like, women, women are the biggest victim of violence. Because men are the biggest perp perpetrator of physical violence. You know, we're talking about physical violence. And there's other forms of violence and toxicity, if you wanted, you wanted to, to use that word. But... You know, men are the biggest victims of, of violence and the biggest perpetrators. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know, we, you could argue, maybe argue that based on certain things like our oh, women in, in certain countries have been suppressed and things like that. Different, like a different kind of aspect. But from the people I know, from the cultures that I come from, that it makes total, absolute sense. Now, I'm not saying that that because one group is more of a victim than another group, that, that has anything to say. But definitely on, on the planet, men are, are, you know, more likely to be confronted with crime. You know, people, like, often there's this, this attitude, yeah, but women are the weaker sex, you know, the weaker gender, the weaker people, not physically. You know, there's, uh, there's this idea, and, and so, to a degree that you could say that's true um, but there's a lot of men who were like physically weaker than other men or there's like you know we've all got maybe injuries you're walking down the street with a back a, a, a back problem and you could be a world class kickboxer walking down the street but you you, you can't move because you've got like a a bad back on that day. There's absolutely no reason that the, you know, it's like just because you're a man, it doesn't mean to say you can, you can like kickbox the next man, you know, when it's like, well, we're all men, we can fight equally. You know, it's not about that, is it? It's not really even about physical strength. It's more 
Um, and, and these days we're seeing it as well that like more and more women are becoming physically violent because the the, the cluing into this idea of unfair fighting, sucker punching and stuff, which isn't it, it, like there used to be more of a code of honour, or there maybe even is a code of honour amongst men. You know, when we fight, like especially if there's other men around or women or whatever, and you was fighting. You, you you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily begin with something that was unfair. You know, an unfair punch, or while the other one's not looking, you punch him. You know, unless you was in danger and it already started and whatever, you may be you know, a, a bit a big guy. You know, maybe use every every moment you can. Um, but like violent situations, you just just not you're not not it's not like. A, it's not like Hollywood, you know, the situations that... You know, like the, the, it, can, it can occur, can't it? Anybody can be violent. Little kids could be violent without even realising it, you know. If like, I remember a little, a little lad trying to chop my leg off with a toy sword, <laughs> you know, but it was like made of wood and it was not sharp, but obviously it was like had a, an edge on it and it was like... Chop a fall like on the on the shin, uh, you know, on my shin bone. I thought, fuck me, you know, that, that's a toy sword, but I've just got a full whack on the shin. And that was all absolutely violent. That was, you know, if someone else had done that, I'd have decked them. But obviously, with a kid pretending to chop your leg off, you don't. <laughs> you know, you might react to an accident, accidentally, sort of. Yeah, you, there's nothing you can do, is there? You, you don't even want to show pain. It's like, <laughs> it's a man. These kids whack me on the leg. But it's a reality, isn't it? Like, the leg is obviously hurting, maybe even bleeding. I'm noticing starfish in Greek there. Amazing, isn't it? But yeah, you know, like these, like, like oh, I noticed this tendency after, like, it, it was a. I've always been interested in conspiracy theories, but after a while I started noticing, like, other biases on TV. You know, like the the news will be on and it'll be like blah 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 the West blah 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 Russia blah 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 bomb blah 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 weather blah 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 football results oh by the way you know one in five women will be subject to abuse in their lifetime end of you know bing bong bong you know nothing to do with men so it, it kind of leaves to me maybe I'm just paranoid but it, to me when when people start delivering one statistic and not the other. Then you start to, to get a, a, a false picture. It's like, okay, men are the perpetrators, women are the victims. And, and so that's how it happens. It's the same with black are the victims, white are the perpetrators. You know, the, the straight are the perpetrators, the trans people are the victims. You know, the, the planet is a, like, you know, CO2 and, and all this lot, you know, the planet is a victim and we're the perpetrators. You know, Ukraine, Russia, the, the, the perpetrators, victims. It's like you know, it's the same with the, the the whole pandemic thing. You know, I'm doing it for the others. So, you know, it, it goes on to really deep psychological levels. I. I, I I'd imagine that a lot of people, like normal people, everyday domestic life, and life's not that bad actually, when you just fall into it like, ah, you know, let's have a beer and, and some, you know, like that little little thing with like ch chips or whatever they call pommes frites, french fries with a bit of mustard or, you know, and you, you can be happy with that, can't you? It's like, you know, fuck the new world order, I've got me like little, little shielshin of... of Pommes frites, I mean, French fries. What the fuck are the cold French fries? Anyway, you know, like you can be happy with life. So why why make it even difficult? But meanwhile, you know, there's 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 like 
it seem, what seems like a million different little conspiracies going on or a million different like secret plans behind different hidden secret because that's what we're talking about when we're talking about conspiracy no such thing as a conspiracy you know like well of course there's pe when two or more people are whispering secret plans you've got a conspiracy it's like otherwise there would be no such word so you know the world seems full of conspiracies and really when then you, you sort of break it all down you see that we're all a part of that world. We're all agents acting on its behalf to a degree. You know, you, you see people like people got get jobs, like say school teachers. And you think, well, why, why don't, why don't they break the? You know, there was good teachers and bad teachers, but all teachers were limited and restricted by the curriculum. The curriculum, <laughs> curriculum. A central scrutinizer, and and then so you, you come to this conclusion. Hang on a sec. We're all caught in the in a in a matrix. <laughs> you know, the matrix itself would be a giant conspiracy. And you'd say, well, okay, there's a lot that makes up that matrix: language, culture, mythology, media, whatever makes up that culture. It's a fucking complicated thing. It's fragile. You know, we're seeing how, like, the world is changing every day. And there's a lot of truths that don't add up about the, the climate and stuff. And we'd say, well, men can't change. You know, there's no such thing as a sex change. CO2 is good for the planet. You know, it, like, it, it was NATO that, that, that overstepped the mark. You know, all these realities that seem, like, people are saying, it's not as simple as that. Well, let's have a debate about it. Or let's, like, not pretend you know it at all. Let's not take the one-sided view if we, if it's not as simple as that. You know, but it's like, okay, we've got to reduce CO2. Let's make loads of electric cars, put up wind turbines, put all of this fucking effort into solar panels and everything without actually even having a discussion about it because people are so, con or, or pretending to be so convinced of this shit, really. You know, it's like, I often hear people having this conversation about when do they change, you know, not even in connection with the, the chain, like in, in the government or anything, um, but this question of like, when do you change your he heating system in your house? You know, when it gets to say 25 years old, you need a new heater, you need to make a decision. And people are they maybe put it off for a while or whatever. There's a big discussion about because, like, if you change to this oven, you get so much back, but only after 10 years. Whereas this oven is, like, cheaper from the beginning, but, but then you, you you lose down the line. You see, you know what I'm saying? So there's different options. And you'd say, well, like, if we was to put all of our investments into putting solar panels on our house roof and, and, and you know, re redoing the house and everything. It's, it's a lot of energy usage. You know, solar panels are not just made of sand. You know, it's like a special quartz crystal. It needs a lot of, like, burning a lot of coal to make solar panels in the first place. So we have to cause more damage in order to create something that will hopefully save the planet in the future. You so, so it's like, even if it was a good idea, it's it's initially bad. You know, so we need to have this conversation about how bad is it initially. It's like you could jump out of a multi-story window with a with with a a, a rope, and you say, well, uh, initially it's like not bad, <laughs> you know, but then after like falling twenty meters and none of the knots hold, you just hit the floor. It's like, you know, if you jump, jumped out of the window, it'd be like, yeah, you just float in for a while. Yeah, of course you're fucking floating for a while, but there's going to come a, a, a flaw and break every bone in your body. And then you'd be sort of like, there like jelly saying, <laughs> you know, you didn't sell me that bit. My son's wife is a teacher, very normy. I generally have pretty good arguments with teachers. I think because they have to, like, I think they have to put their um, dedication to that norm. You, you know, you can't create a second reality, it might slip out. You know, you, like, you teach the curriculum and that's it, because. 
people want want to express the idea that they might be contradicting themselves. Like, you know, I, I, I'm able to believe that the planet is round and hollow and flat and concave and it, and actually maybe the planet doesn't exist. I could conceive that. You know, I could conceive that we're all, like, um, in, in a form of collective dream or in, in some kind of matrix connected to the computer. I don't think that's that unconceivable. You know, I think if anybody was, like, sitting there, oh, obviously we've got to do the stuff we do in our everyday lives. We're going to maintain it as if it was real, because it just might be real, whatever real means. You know, but nobody really knows what, what that means. We look out at the city full of all its amazing things in shop windows, full of amazing inventions and things that make our lives better. But it's just made of sticks and stones, in a way. You know, when I say stones and minerals taken from the ground and formed and forged into different shapes, that look like unicorns, maybe. You know, we've we'll eluded ourselves by, by, you know, like a cup. This is a cup. Now, I want, I want, I, it, its function be, it comes from the, 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 the way you hold it, doesn't it? Like, it, it doesn't need a handle. The handle's maybe just because it gets hot. So I guess that's a good invention. It's like, okay, how yeah, you make a handle. But if you just hold it with your hand, you know, you can see it's a cup, isn't it? And like if you, it, it's got a hole in the middle. You know, it's it's not really an invention, it's a discovery. We've discovered it, and it? We, we didn't invent the cup. You know, we took this and formed it into this shape, and like, there's cups everywhere with faces on it, quotes and everything. Cups have become cult. Now have some forks and stuff, you know, that we all think were their inventions. And I guess they, 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 they are, but they're more discoveries than anything else. And, and that alludes us into thinking that we know stuff, that we know the world, that we know matter, that we're, we're, we're like, you know, masters of matter, that we have the control over the matrix, but we don't. You know, we create, drive each other mad. Every single detective in history has been a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, I love detectives, Columbo and, and what was it, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. James Bond, is he a detective or is he a spy or a super secret agent? Oh yeah, elementary dear Watson. No one tells the kids about the real cost of the green agenda, they just tell them it's good for the, uh, it's good for the planet. Yeah, um, I, I, I find it really difficult to get my head around it. Sometimes I think about, like, say, if you've got, you've got something like, um, like, it, it, like it's bent one way, and you, like to, to bend it back to the middle, you have to push it further. It's like springy, you know. It's like, like the thing's gone too far left, and then you have to pull too far right to get it back to stay in the middle. And that's what it sort of feels like, you know, when you've got a piece of wire and you're trying to bend it straight, you have to overbend it a little bit and then not bend it, overbend it back because it's springy. And it sort of feels like that's the, the way the world sort of... And so, like, in light of that, you know, like, obviously, if I look at cities and if I look out of the planet, I could say that industry and, and people don't seem to be showing a great deal of respect for the planet. You know, like, when you see the litter and in different countries, you know, you could say, yeah, you know, that's pretty disrespectful. So you you could say from a uh, from a moral perspective, which is you know just as upright in a way, as long as the morals don't like get in the way of reason and become irrational. But from a, even from a moral perspective, respect perspective, even to say that we should you know 
respect the planet. I, I personally think it, it, it's a good way of living to respect or to, to honour everything. You know, you, the, the water you drink, to, to be thankful of it and to honour it. You know, it's not like the air. <laughs> you know, the air we breathe, to be thankful of it, to, to, for everything to be thankful of. You know, like the meat we eat, to be thankful to the animal and to think, you know, I'm, uh, if an animal eats me, I hope they enjoy what they eat. All a part of the food chain. You know, that kind of respect. And when I look out at the planet, I think it's not like that. You know, it, 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 to me, I, I always considered myself as more liberal, in, in like more, you know, the other side. To say we need, you know, more freedom and more individuality and stuff. In the whole old traditional conservative ways, seem to be rigid and and it's almost like you felt like a, it'd be like a, a slave to to that rigidity, you know. And we're seeing now like the, that problems of like some people want to preserve nationality and other people want to like just let every culture just come in and dissolve the, the nationality away. But we all speak different languages. We all have different ideas, and I can't understand why pe people want to, would want to flee from one country to another and bring um, a lot of those values with them. You know. On the other hand, it would be nice that everybody on the planet was all brothers and sisters, and we all live happily together. Sounds like ideology. Maybe it's an ide ideology that's driven. I think we're very like like the, the the way that the narrative of the the human race goes is very novel you know the human race seems to make decisions based on not on reason or truth but on novelty you know if we gave the, 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 the if you gave the human race a, a democratic vote you know a real true democratic vote of what the human race would want and you gave the options for, would you rather have an easy life, natural and everything, or would you rather have unicorns and, and drag queens? And I, I like unicorns, but obviously, you know, rainbows and unicorns have, have been have been debased. So, do you want a world that's debased? <laughs> you know, and the and the audience would vote, yeah, we want the madness. You know, what I mean, it's like in these talent shows and stuff. They always, you know, the audience always choose something messed up because it's more entertaining you know it's almost like it, it satisfies the curiosity of the masses and maybe maybe it's curiosity is the the thing i remember the time in life my life i think i had a burnout because of the job you know self-employed and trying to get work things out and just had a burnout and i thought well what and it was curiosity, really, that kept me kept me sort of interested in life. Because you can get kind of a little bit bit fed up of, you know, after a burnout. But curiosity was still there. It's like, you know, what's around there or what's in that box. But maybe curiosity is that, you know, they say curiosity killed the cat. Fermented apples get animals pissed without eating, yeah. Yeah, I was on about that the other day, actually. You know, he's like, if you used to eat an apple that was uh, already brewed. Is our curiosity a, cu uh, a curse or the key to our evolution? Interesting thought, yeah. And then there's like the fact of is it really is is it, is it evolution? You know, like like a tree grows. You could say there's like you see the different sizes. You know, like from an acorn into an oak tree, <laughs> and uh, the, the the different phrases. The, like one is the the seed, two is the root, three is the branch, four is the fruit. 
and different stages of growth. And so if you was going from stage two to three, you'd say, oh, I'm evolving. <laughs> Look at me, I'm evolving. No, mate, growth, you're in puberty. So like humanity will go through this, these phases of, of like puberty and stuff. You know, like humanity is kind of get, getting from puberty into, into adulthood at the moment, I think. There's some I, I, I was looking at years ago, made a video on it, which came back to me. Yeah, evolution, evolution in its simple definition. True, there's different sort of interpretations of evolution as well. Evolve, evolve. I, I often think that um, the universe itself is an evolution machine. It's either that or a paranoia machine. <laughs> But yeah, it definitely, like, it it, it it seems to be trying to work something out. I find it's very scary. Existence itself is scary, isn't it? If we didn't have music to decorate it, it'd be really scary. You know, like, what what are we doing, sat like, a little speck of dust on, on a, a speck of dust on a speck of dust in the middle of the, 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 the universe, spinning around the sun, apparently. And if it wasn't that, it'd be even weirder. You know, people are like, it's, it, you know, it's not like this, it's like that. Well, it doesn't matter how it is. It's weird enough to think that we're just a, a speck of a planet. A little, little people on planet floating through space with millions of stars. And I'm sat here and I can, I look out like you look out of your eyes. And you exist and you know that because you, because you, you because you're the one witnessing all of those stars and planets and everything else and you know they're out there and you know you're small but you're the one who's witnessing it still and you just kind of feel a little bit strange and you look to your, your partner or person in the room or whatever or I think yeah they're seeing the same probably or they're acting like it so we're, go we're all good we're floating through space alone in the universe together it's weird it is absolutely weird. And don't eat the, the yellow snow either. It's a holographic construct. There is that, isn't there? I mean, it, like it definitely, like there's a phys there's a physical construct of forms, or like let's say. Uh, an energetic construct, but out of that, we've created a form of holographic overlay to everything. Now, when we look at something, when we see the good old tree on the f on the field, we don't see the tree; we just see the the surface of the tree, obviously. And we call it tree. Hello, tree. Don't forget, folks, smash your monitor device to the left to wonder how you're going to press the like button. Or to be left to wonder. Smash the like button. <laughs> yeah. Hello there, Mahatma Levelance. I don't know if I've said hello yet, but I have now. It is funny, really. It is incredibly funny. Loves a good tree, me. I hugging it. Yeah, I like to be out in the in the forest, if possible. Get a little bit of that forest air. Something I've been needing a little bit. It's it's, it's been a it's been different a different difficult time. 
Uh, I feel like things are brewing different in different ways in each country. You see how things are things are changing in Germany, changing in Britain. I think it's interesting to observe. You know, I don't, I don't like to to, to um, I don't like to promote sitting back and doing nothing. But I think you know that's the best, like one of the best kind of starting places to stop the world and get clarity. I think we like the philosophy of it all. I definitely do. So you know. I guess I'm going to slowly wrap things up. We're coming to the end of the hour. If you've got any little questions or anything, I can definitely uh, take another hour answering them. <laughs> no, but really, one of, the, one of the things I wanted to talk about, but I didn't really talk about much, you know, it's like, the, like gaslighting or going crazy, the way that the environment can, can drive you crazy. And... Like if you if you're in a in a company or in a business or got, you got a, a regular job, um, the routine will be crazy, but it'll be kind of a normal crazy. If you're self-employed or if you stand in the middle point in in the centre point of a group of people, um, you have to be quite I think mentally strong because like at the moment where every the majority of a team of people that's around you suddenly start believing something different you as the leader have to some, somehow um, somehow work things out otherwise you lose your team you know it's like suddenly everybody believes that well I was going to mention one of the other government agenda you know suddenly half your team you know like 70% of your team think that like masks are effective wearing a mask you know and you think well how am I going to convince them they're not and so if you're in the centre point um, obviously the pressure's on mentally and everything and that's not to be underestimated I think generally just the way I, we, we, I, we're made like we're available all the time on the, on the internet and how we've got the messages and I, th I think I could probably just like slowly wrap things up with the, with the thought about having a day off from the internet, one day a week, or definitely like putting it onto um, like like turning it, turning it off in the night, things like that. I know some people have got like say, oh yeah, I need to be on because I'm a doctor or I'm, I'm a plumber. You know, but you can definitely turn off like the messages and, and shit like that. All of, like all of the things that make your mobile phone control you rather than the other way around, definitely to be considered. I think like you know, it's quite easy to become addicted to something without realizing it. And technology and com the ab ability to communicate and to be available every every five minutes, and never have a little bit of comfort. You know, never have. Um, a, a time where just one thing happens. That's why I like these these kinds of shows each evening. It's like a chance to just put something on that you don't you don't have to keep switching around. It's not it's not going to do anything wacky. You know, it's not that weird anyway. I wore a clown mask. That was safe and effective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. We should all wear like um, um like a secret clown mask. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I like Mac clowns that much, but definitely um, uh, th th there's a joke element to it, and I don't mean like you know people's peril, but I think like you know the, the construct, the narrative, you know the idea, the political agendas, the ideas. It's it, it's very funny, isn't it? Even even your own peril and my peril. You know, it's like I've got. You know, my, my shoulders are killing me. Ha ha ha! <laughs> you know, they're laughing at your own peril. Um, it's the be best way of getting through life, really. I'm in a sense of humour. Um, but I guess sometimes people would take offence to certain senses of humour. 
so maybe it's like just good to keep that laughter within the laughter within yeah nice one so uh, I didn't, didn't really spend much time looking in rumble greetings to everyone in rumble and greetings to odyssey I never do any any much promotion or anything, so uh, I, I, yeah, maybe, maybe at some point there's something worth promoting, some idea or some guests or whatever it is. If you've got any ideas, that, you know, any things that you want to share with me, you can uh, you can write in the comments box below, and um, just have to stop these other broadcasts from I tell you what let's have, let's have the uh... weekly line up there just have a little look at this for all of your localized pain reduction needs buy yourself some of not a doctor dr roberts salve Please find the links in the description below. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm off, off camera. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one. That was, um, that was the, yeah, the best stuff on the market. Excellent. <laughs> Good. It's been a nice calm even in this evening for me, I think. And um I'll probably be ranting away at some point. But until then, have a good time. Just chill out a little bit as well. And uh Yeah. I love you all. Take care. I love each other. Press the big button to end the stream. Cheerio.